about a week ago, Google announced their quantum chip, Willow. And during the same time, we have seen NVIDIA's stock price see a lot and a lot of pressure. I've also gotten a lot of questions from you, the viewers, of what are my thoughts on Willow? And is this something NVIDIA stock investors should be worried about? Now, too long, don't watch. I want to say, while quantum is very exciting, and right now, all these stock prices are jumping at crazy, crazy values as there is this whole excitement of quantum computing. I want to say as an NVIDIA investor, I really wouldn't be too worried. And on today's episode, I am going to explain why. Now, before we go any further, make sure to hit the thumbs up. Make sure to hit the subscribe button as this is going to be the best place you're going to find any semiconductor and AI news. Also, check out the pinned comment for special offer at fool.com slash Rosé and check out my daily semiconductor newsletter, whatthechiphappened.com. The link is down below. That is completely free. I want to thank The Motley Fool for sponsoring this video. And check out fool.com slash Jose for the 10 best stocks to buy now. With that link, you get a promotional offer for the subscription service. Now, let's continue with today's episode. All right. So there was a lot about Willow, but I do believe the two main points that came out here was first, Google is announcing some form of quantum chip. I want to say this is not surprising because Google has been working with quantum for a, a while. I mean, there's other companies that are also developing um, quantum chips. For those that are not familiar, even Intel has made or kind of touched one way or another the quantum market. I mean, NVIDIA, as we're going to discuss in another episode, is also involved in quantum computing. So overall, as an investor, one of the main reasons I wouldn't be worried about is because if the technology was ready to be turned on tomorrow or to kind of make some revolutionary change for the world, then I know NVIDIA would be working, would be showcasing all their products right away. Now, the second kind of thing that really got attention from the media is that Willow performed a standard benchmark computation in under five minutes that would take the fastest supercomputer about 10 septillion years, a number that vastly exceeds the age of the universe. And I want to say this is where there's a lot of fear. And this fear, in my opinion, is created by a lot of gimmick made in this press release. And the easiest way for me to kind of explain this is every tool has a purpose, right? It's like saying, hey, look, I have a hammer and I have a saw. And someone is using a saw and says, hey, look, I cut down a tree with the saw in five minutes, something that would take a hammer over 10,000 years to do, right? Because at the end of the day, the tools, while both are respectable and used for different use cases, it's very impractical to kind of compare a hammer to a saw. And that's what we're going to discuss in today's episode, how the problems that each chips are trying to solve are different. So obviously you wouldn't take a hammer to cut down a tree. And in my opinion, this kind of problem that was used in this benchmark is one that compares a hammer to a saw. Um, so I'll explain a little bit more of that in today's episode. Now, the second thing is if you are watching this or read this press release, you would have noticed at the bottom that this is still in very, very early innings. I mean, this is in milestones and milestones is when you're kind of in the research and development phase. There's nothing about kind of mass distribution, mass manufacturing. That alone has its own kind of bottlenecks as well in the future. But right now, it's more in kind of the research stage. So this overall just showcases that, hey, look, while this is pretty cool technology that we should follow, it's not something that's ready for mass production, for mass use at the moment. Now, I also kind of want to discuss some other things. So like I mentioned, Willow is definitely a significant technical milestone and a strong signal that quantum error correction and scaling are advancing. But it's also a marketing moment for Google's quantum ambitions. That, like I mentioned, that dramatic speed of claim, a task that would take a supercomputer 10 septillion years, reflects a very specialized benchmark problem chosen to highlight quantum capabilities. It doesn't mean that quantum chips now outperform classical supercomputers on general practical tasks. In essence, it's somewhat like I compared earlier, a saw and a hammer. Each excel in different and carefully chosen scenarios. Quantum chips will not replace AI accelerators in the near future. And they solve fundamentally different types of problems and face unique manufacturing and scaling challenges. Widespread mainstream use is likely still years to decades away. 
All right. So now that I kind of talked a little bit about that hype and kind of you're comparing two different products with each other, I want to explain a little bit of the differences between quantum chips and AI accelerators. One great thing about AI accelerators, right, this comes from the foundation and stems from huge, huge research and development in the semiconductor space. So while they are new, AI accelerators still are from the fundamental semiconductor industry where companies like TSMC are evolving and continue to learn on how to scale advanced semiconductor chips. Now, also what's very important is the manufacturing of quantum chips differ sharply compared to the established semiconductor process. Quantum chips rely on superconducting qubits or other quantum states that are extremely sensitive to their environment. They must operate at some crazy near absolute zero temperatures to prevent any kind of loss in quantum information. The fabrication also involves materials like superconducting metals and specialized microwave control circuitry. So kind of the manufacturing of quantum chips is going to be a huge, huge challenge going forward. And that's why when we're looking at companies like Google, they are still kind of in the milestone stage of learning how we can use these chips and running simulations and running certain tests. Now, like I mentioned, I mean, bottlenecks, if you need to have these chips running at sub-zero temperatures, that's going to be very hard for your typical data center or kind of consumer place to be running this type of chips, right? The environment needs to be very, very much controlled. So that's going to take a whole different challenge within itself. So for me, quantum computing is definitely pretty exciting. In the near term, I think we are going to continue to see stuff like this. Specialized demonstrations, improved error corrections, and incremental increases in quip accounts and coherence times. In the midterm, we're going to probably see more solving niche, high-value problems better than classical computer, maybe chemical simulations or certain optimization tasks. Now, in the long term, and I'm talking probably 10 plus years, we're going to see fully scalable, error-corrected quantum computers that integrate into existing computing workflows and perhaps power entirely new industries. Until then, though, quantum chips, in my opinion, are still going to remain primarily in the realm of research with specialized trials and carefully controlled benchmarks rather than the mainstream computing landscape. So remember, quantum chips and AI chips are each meant to solve different problems. Quantum chips aim to solve problems where quantum mechanics provide a natural computing advantage such as simulating quantum phenomena, factoring large numbers, certain optimization tasks, and sampling from complex probability distributions. These tasks are famously hard for classical systems. A real-world example for quantum chips would be kind of the designing a new drug molecule that requires understanding quantum interactions at an atomic level. A quantum chip might simulate such interactions directly, potentially discovering drugs faster than any classical model can. Now, AI chips, like I mentioned, aim to efficiently compute large-scale arithmetic for training and running neural networks. They accelerate computations like metric multiplications, enable faster training of larger language models, image recognition systems, and other machine learning tasks. Real-world examples are an AI accelerator in a data center speeding up the training of a model that translates language in real time or processes billions of social media images for content moderation. Now, like I mentioned, Willow represents a technical milestone and a welcome demonstration that Google can scale quibits and reduce errors in a meaningful way. However, the headline numbers are part of a marketing narrative, highlighting a very selective benchmark where quantum chips excel in. Now, Willow represents a technical milestone and a welcome demonstration, right? You definitely want to see the evolution and innovation of technology. And it shows that Google can scale quibits and reduce errors in a meaningful way. However, the headline numbers like we saw are part of a marketing narrative, in my opinion, highlighting a very selective benchmark where obviously quantum devices excel. Now, quantum chips and AI accelerators in the future, I believe, are going to complement not repl replace each other. While quantum devices have enormous long-term promise, they still face a lot of engineering, manufacturing, and theoretical challenges. Meaningful mainstream adoptions is still very much light year still years away, and the AI market is still here to stay. So like I mentioned, as an NVIDIA shareholder, this is not something that I would be worried about. As a long-term investor, this is obviously an opportunity in the future. 
But right now, personally, I'm not going to be investing too much in quantum computing as we are still in very much early stages. If I was to invest in quantum computing, it would be through very, very small allocation in my portfolio. More importantly, in the future episode, I'm actually going to discuss how a company like NVIDIA is really focused and providing solutions for the quantum space. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. Take care, have a good day, and see you next time.